Hello again, everyone. I thought that I would, for a second time, record my rest day uh, activities uh, just because my brain had a few too many thoughts and um, I thought it'd be good for me if I just emptied out a little bit. So here is my rest day yoga stretching active recovery. I try to do this two times a week. It usually takes about 45 minutes uh, and I add foam rolling as well. Sometimes if I don't have time for the whole thing, I'll separate it up um, and maybe just do 20 minutes of yoga one day, the full thing another day, and some foam rolling on an extra day, just depending on how much free time I have. I will also add before I forget, I ended up sleeping for over 10 hours straight and when I woke up, I was having a dream that I was buying Mick Jagger a truck. I don't know why he couldn't afford a truck on his own, um, but first I was going to get him a GMC truck, and then I thought, well, maybe I could get him a Dodge. And then we ended up at the Dodge dealership, and then it turned into me buying a Dodge Charger that I wanted to get custom painted with this really intense Barbie pink, but I couldn't decide what color I wanted for the stripes down the front. Um, and that's when I woke up and I started thinking, yeah, what color would go with that? Honestly, anything would ruin it. It just needs to be the solid Barbie pink on its own. Um, but then I was also reminded that I'm not rich and I'm not going to be buying that anytime soon, but that would be cool. So now I'll get into what I actually wanted to talk about, which is something that I realized was an additional aspect of my OCD. Lots of times um, when you're OCD, there's a lot of little extra brain things that you don't realize are OCD, especially when you're more isolated and there's nobody around to be like, yo, what's up with that? That's a little weird. You just think most of these things are normal, but then the ones that are blatantly obvious um, are OCD. Like you're driving and it's like, oh, did I just hit that kid? No, I didn't. But your brain has these weird false memories when you have OCD. That thing is very, very, you know, screaming in your head, hey, that's OCD, just stop it. Um, those kind of intrusive thoughts and whatnot, very, very obvious. But this is something that I started thinking about that I realized is probably OCD um, or almost 100% certain is OCD, is my, always need, my need to always know the why in order to fix the problem or to ruminate over a potential solution. So for simple things, the why of, oh, why do I have a tummy ache? Why do I have indigestion? Let's go through every single thing I ate and let's really think about why did I have a tummy ache today? because I want to fix it so that I never have to have a tummy ache again. And then because you don't actually know the answer to many of these whys, um, your brain will just pick one of the things at random and say, well, this is why this happened. This is the solution. Let's not do this anymore. Even though a lot of the answers to the why um, can never be told to you as you know actual fact. Um, so it's always just kind of made up and then potentially you're kicking things out of your diet um, that weren't the cause of it and it could have just been something as simple <clears throat> as uh, maybe I was more stressed out and sometimes when you're stressed or anxious then your digestion is a little whacked out so it's not because there was one particular thing it always has to be I must have done something wrong um, that resulted in this discomfort or this error in some way and that I need to stop it, find the problem and fix it. So it's always about seeking problem, seeking solution and always trying to fix wrongs or right wrongs. A lot of things as well related to my bodybuilding of why was this rep crooked? Uh, what did I do wrong? Why was this? Why was my form off? Why are my hips crooked? Why, why, why? And fix, fix, fix. And that um, kind of in all encompasses all areas of my life of always needing to find the why because I always need to fix imperfections because OCD wants everything to be perfect. So when anything seems to be imperfect, even just I'm in a bad mood, why? I need to fix it. What has set me off? What's going on? Always finding 
problems because realistically nothing is ever perfect. So there's always problems, there's always things to fix, and I always need to know why because I always have to be on a mission for perfection. And this is something that I realized is maybe why my, I want to say recent, it's not recent anymore. It happened back in April, I should get over it, but I'm not. Why the ghosting situation impacted me so deeply for one obviously it broke my heart because I trusted this person um, and essentially was then betrayed by this person he was not the person he said he was it was an imposter situation but it was then something that was imperfect it was then something where I thought I made a mistake Um, it was a situation of what did I do wrong here what went wrong I have to fix it. But when you're ghosted and you get no communication, you're just left to your own device devices of this could have been wrong. This could have been wrong. This could have been wrong. I want to fix, fix, fix. Um, But this in this situation or any ghosting situation or relationship situation, it's not just me and me alone. Um, So the solution, no matter how much uh, it's sought after, can never really be resolved because it involves the participation of another party, another person who is refusing to participate. So then it actually never gets fixed. There's never a solution. It never gets resolved because you're just continually ignored no matter how often you reach out, no matter how much you try to fix things or say the perfect thing, say the right thing. It involves the other person um, who is choosing to never communicate with you again. And I think that's why it's it wounded me so deeply because I could never stop seeking the fix. I could never stop seeking the resolve because when you're OCD, the mission is to always seek and repair. And it was impossible in this situation because the other person was refusing to participate. And so in lots of times, people would say, you got to get over this. It's been a really long time or even questioning myself. Why can't I get over this? Um, I can get over a broken heart. Um, But it wasn't just about that. It was actually triggering chemicals in my brain of we have to fix, we have to fix, we have to fix. Why can't we fix? So it was more about being in the agony of something that I literally couldn't fix, but that my OCD was fixated on fixing and really couldn't let it go. because there was just never a solution, but it'll keep seeking, it will keep searching, and it never really gives up, Um, because if OCD gave up, it would be maybe a little bit more bearable, but that's the problem. It doesn't give up. It has to keep trying to fix and resolve, Um, and that was or has been an extremely challenging thing for me. No matter how many months have gone by, it's like, can you stop trying to fix this? Can you stop trying to talk to this person? Can you stop trying to figure out what went wrong or what you did wrong, but not realizing that it was an OCD thing and just thinking it was some kind of weakness within myself that I couldn't stop doing this or some kind of losing the best connection with a human being that I've ever had and not being able to give up that connection, thinking that there would never be another connection like that in my life. I mean, there were some other, there were certainly some of those factors in play, but um, the reality is, is that it was mentally bothersome to my OCD. And that, in a lot of ways, can be emotional torture for a person with OCD. It's like a germaphobe saying you can't shower. Um, You're mentally always in a state of discomfort. But I realize that now, and I think I'm going to be on a better path. So here's my day off, and thank you for listening to that ramble. Bye!